Yellowstone National Park, renowned for its breathtaking landscapes and geothermal wonders, is now at the center of a potentially alarming geological development. Amateur researchers and avid watchers of the park's live cameras have observed a large bulge forming beneath the park, sparking concerns that a significant geological event may be brewing. A group of dedicated amateur researchers, who regularly monitor the live cameras set up around Yellowstone National Park, have reported a disturbing anomaly. These enthusiasts noticed the emergence of a dome-shaped bulge beneath the park's surface, a phenomenon that seemed to develop over several months. Intrigued and concerned, they began to systematically document and analyze the changes they observed. To substantiate their claims, the researchers collected and compared photographs from several months ago with more recent images. The comparison revealed a noticeable increase in the bulge's size and prominence. This evidence suggests that the ground beneath Yellowstone is rising, potentially due to magma accumulating in a subterranean chamber. The consistency and clarity of these photographic records have lent credibility to their observations. Yellowstone National Park sits atop one of the world's largest active volcanic systems. The Yellowstone caldera, often referred to as a supervolcano, has experienced three major eruptions in the past 2.1 million years, with the most recent occurring approximately 640,000 years ago. These eruptions were cataclysmic, significantly altering the landscape and impacting our planet. The Yellowstone volcanic system is continuously monitored by the United States Geological Survey and other scientific bodies. Regular seismic activity, hydrothermal explosions and ground deformation are part of the region's dynamic geological environment. However, the formation of a large bulge suggests a more significant and potentially hazardous development. The most straightforward explanation for the bulge is the accumulation of magma beneath the park. As magma rises from deeper in the Earth's mantle, it can create a dome-shaped uplift on the surface. This process is not uncommon in volcanic regions and can precede eruptions. The photographs showing the increasing size of the bulge support this theory, indicating that a substantial amount of magma may be pooling in a subterranean chamber. Another possibility is that the bulge is the result of increased hydrothermal activity. Yellowstone is known for its extensive network of geysers, hot springs and fumaroles, all of which are driven by the heat from the underlying magma. Changes in the hydrothermal system, such as the pressurization of underground water reservoirs, could also cause surface deformation. However, the dome-shaped structure and its steady growth suggest that magma accumulation is a more likely cause. The primary concern raised by the formation of the bulge is the possibility of an eruption. While Yellowstone's volcanic activity is closely monitored, predicting eruptions remains an inexact science. If the bulge indicates that a significant volume of magma is accumulating, the risk of an eruption could be increasing. An eruption at Yellowstone could range from a minor event, releasing ash and lava locally, to a catastrophic super-eruption with global consequences. An eruption at Yellowstone, particularly a large one, would have profound environmental and human impacts. Locally, it could devastate the park and surrounding areas, destroying habitats and communities. Ash fallout could disrupt air travel, damage infrastructure, and pose health risks across the continent. On a global scale, a super-eruption could inject vast amounts of ash and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, leading to a volcanic winter with significant climatic and agricultural consequences. In response to these observations, increased monitoring and research are essential. The United States Geological Survey and other scientific institutions should enhance their surveillance of the region, employing tools such as satellite imagery, ground-based radar, and seismic sensors to gather more detailed data. Collaborative efforts between amateur researchers and professional scientists can also help validate and expand upon the initial findings. Raising public awareness about the potential risks associated with Yellowstone's volcanic activity is crucial. While it is important not to incite panic, providing accurate information about the current situation and potential scenarios can help communities prepare for any eventuality. Public education campaigns and emergency preparedness plans should be developed to ensure that people understand the risks and know how to respond in the event of an eruption. Scientists have recently said that there is a surprising amount of magma 
under Yellowstone's supervolcano. New research published in the journal Science suggests that one of the magma reservoirs beneath the Yellowstone caldera, a large crater and supervolcano, contains a greater amount of liquid molten rock than previously believed by experts. Researchers can gauge the proximity of a volcanic eruption by assessing the quantity of molten rock present beneath the volcano. However, despite the possibility of a larger amount of molten lava beneath Yellowstone than previously estimated, the colossal volcano is still improbable to erupt in the foreseeable future. Magma is composed of rocks and crystals at different degrees of firmness. The higher the level of liquefaction, the greater the likelihood of a volcanic eruption. Beneath the Yellowstone caldera, there are two substantial reservoirs containing magma. The first reservoir is located approximately 3 to 10 miles beneath the surface, while the second reservoir is situated 12 to 30 miles underground. According to prior studies, scientists believed that the shallower reservoir consisted primarily of solid material, with only 5 to 15 percent of it being molten rock. Now, following the utilization of high-performance supercomputers to re-evaluate seismic data from the previous two decades, Researchers now assert that the ratio is in fact between 16 and 20 percent. That amount is still far below than the liquid magma threshold, which scientists estimate to be around 35 to 50 percent, and is believed to be the point at which an eruption will occur. Although the recent discoveries do not alter the level of risk associated with the volcano, they do signify a significant advancement in our comprehension of the subsurface characteristics of Yellowstone. Kari Cooper, an Earth and planetary scientist at the University of California, Davis, who was not part of the study. The Earth has not generated further molten magma. Scientists assert that they currently possess a more precise comprehension of the pre-existing information. Seismic waves, generated by seismic activity, traverse several strata within the Earth's interior prior to reaching seismometers located on the Earth's surface. As the waves encounter molten rock, their speed decreases, allowing researchers to analyze the time it takes for the waves to reach the seismometers. This information provides valuable insights regarding the quantity of magma present underground. Previous investigations have made the assumption that seismic waves propagate in a straight path from the earthquake towards the seismometer. However, the actuality of their adventure is considerably more intricate than that. For this study, Scientists utilized supercomputers to simulate seismic waves in three dimensions. This approach provided them with a more comprehensive understanding of the crystal mush beneath Yellowstone. Ground deformation, or changes in the Earth's surface elevation, is another critical indicator of magma movement. Scientists use GPS measurements and satellite-based radar to monitor these changes. Inflation, or the rising of the ground, suggests that magma is accumulating in the shallow reservoir, while deflation indicates magma withdrawal. These measurements help scientists estimate the amount of magma moving into or out of the reservoirs, offering insights into the overall magma volume. Gravity measurements also contribute to our understanding of Yellowstone's magma chamber. By measuring the gravitational field at different locations, scientists can detect variations in subsurface density. Areas with higher magma content will exhibit different gravitational anomalies compared to regions with solid rock. These measurements, combined with seismic and GPS data, provide a more comprehensive estimate of the magma volume. Based on the data from these various techniques, scientists estimate that the shallow magma reservoir beneath Yellowstone contains approximately 10,000 cubic kilometers of material, with 5 to 15 percent of it being molten. This translates to roughly 500 to 1,500 cubic kilometers of magma. While this is a significant volume, it is important to note that not all of this magma is likely to erupt in a single event. The deeper magma reservoir is estimated to contain a much larger volume of material, approximately 46,000 cubic kilometers, with around 5% of it being molten. This means there could be between 920 and 2,300 cubic kilometers of magma in this deeper layer. Together, the total amount of magma beneath Yellowstone is substantial, though much of it is stored in a semi-solid state and not immediately available for eruption. Understanding the volume of magma beneath Yellowstone is crucial for assessing the potential impact of future eruptions. While a supereruption, involving the eruption of over 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, is possible, it is a rare event. 
Even smaller eruptions could have significant local and global effects, making continuous monitoring essential. The vast magma reservoirs beneath Yellowstone highlight the importance of robust monitoring systems. Continuous seismic GPS and gravity measurements, along with other geophysical techniques, are critical for detecting signs of volcanic unrest. This monitoring helps scientists provide early warnings and allows for better preparedness and response strategies to mitigate the impact of potential eruptions. A supervolcano eruption would result in immediate and extensive destruction of infrastructure. The blast zone, extending up to 100 miles from the epicenter, would experience complete devastation. Buildings, roads, bridges and utilities within this area would be obliterated. Initial estimates suggest that rebuilding infrastructure in the affected areas could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. The eruption would spew vast quantities of ash into the atmosphere, leading to widespread ashfall across the United States. This ash would blanket agricultural lands, causing crop failures and rendering soil infertile. Livestock would also be severely affected, both directly from the ash and indirectly from the lack of feed. The agricultural sector would face losses in the tens of billions of dollars, significantly impacting food supply chains and causing food prices to soar. Volcanic ash poses a severe threat to aviation as it can damage aircraft engines and obscure visibility. A supervolcano eruption would lead to the grounding of flights across much of North America and potentially globally, depending on the extent of the ash cloud. The aviation industry would incur massive losses from grounded flights disrupted schedules and damage to aircraft. Additionally, the interruption of air travel would hinder the transportation of goods and people, further exacerbating economic losses. The ashfall would have significant health implications for populations across the continent. Respiratory issues would surge, requiring extensive medical care and straining healthcare systems. The cost of treating these health issues, along with the economic impact of lost productivity due to illness, would add billions to the overall economic toll. The economic effects of the eruption would extend far beyond the immediate vicinity of Yellowstone. The disruption of transportation networks, both air and ground, would hinder trade and industry. Manufacturing sectors reliant on just-in-time supply chains would face delays and shortages, leading to decreased productivity and financial losses. The broader economic impact could push the global economy into recession, as businesses struggle to cope with the disruptions. One of the most far-reaching consequences of a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption would be its impact on our planet. The massive injection of volcanic gases, particularly sulfur dioxide, into the atmosphere would lead to the formation of sulfate aerosols. These aerosols reflect sunlight, causing a temporary cooling of the Earth's surface. This volcanic winter could last for several years leading to shortened growing seasons and reduced agricultural yields worldwide. The resulting food shortages and price increases would have severe economic and humanitarian consequences, potentially leading to widespread famine and social unrest. The insurance industry would face unprecedented challenges in the aftermath of a supervolcano eruption. The scale of the disaster would result in claims far exceeding those from any previous natural disaster. Reinsurers, who provide backup insurance for insurance companies, would also be heavily impacted, leading to a potential crisis within the industry. The long-term effects could include higher insurance premiums and reduced availability of coverage for natural disasters. The long-term economic recovery from such a catastrophic event would be slow and costly. Rebuilding infrastructure, restoring agricultural productivity and stabilizing the economy would require significant investment and international cooperation. Government spending on reconstruction efforts would strain public finances, potentially leading to increased debt and taxation. The recovery process could take decades, with lasting impacts on economic growth and development. 